In the beginning of our discussion of coding theory, we made the identification that if you take a n bit uh, an n bit sequence of zeros and ones, that can be naturally identified as a vector in z two n because you have a first you have a first number, a second number, all the way up to the nth number. Now, for the sake of convenience, right now, I'm going to call the first one zero, then the second one one, and the last one be n minus one. Now, these vectors of z2n in a very natural way can be identified with polynomials in the polynomial ring z2 adjoint x. So the, the polynomial ring whose coefficients come from z2. And this is then to explain why we uh, I identified the indices in the following way. The vector 0, 1, uh, a1, excuse me, a0, a1, a2, all, all the way up to an minus 1, that can be identified with the polynomial whose constant coefficient is a0, whose, leading, whose uh, linear coefficient is a1, whose quadratic coefficient is a2, and then finally whose uh, leading coefficient is a n minus 1. We can identify um, a vector with n coordinates with a polynomial whose degree is at most n minus 1. And so uh, commonplace in linear algebra is to consider this set, uh, this set, the set of polynomials where the degree um, is bounded above by some fixed number, say n. So we're gonna we're gonna borrow that notation again. This is very common in linear algebra, such as Math 2270 at SUU. Uh, take the set p sub n, um, and we're gonna make that be the set of all polynomials whose degree is at most n. Um, and in this situation with coding theory, we'll assume the coefficients are coming from z2. Um, so because of that, it's a very common thing to prove in linear algebra that the set of polynomials whose degree is at most n minus 1 is isomorphic to the vector space z2n. And be clear, this is an isomorphism of vector spaces. And it's just this identification is, that's what we're talking about right here. This identification um, will preserve the addition structure. That is, the way we add vectors is exactly how we add polynomials with respect to this identification. Um, when we add like terms of polynomials, that's just what it means to add component-wise with vectors. Um, and then scalar multiplication also means the same thing. Um, when you scale a vector, whether it's z2n or honestly fn for any field, when you scale a vector, you just times each of the coordinates by that constant. Um, well, with polynomials, you think of scalar multiplication uh, as just multiplying by a constant, you distribute that constant and you'll times each of the coefficients by that same constant. So again, under this identification, the operations of addition and scalar multiplication are identical. So these are this is an isomorphism of vector spaces. So instead of writing a vector like this, we could write it like a polynomial. And both of those are ways to represent binary code words. But what's the advantage of thinking about it now as a polynomial. I mean, after all, the notation of a vector is much more compact. Why would we want to add some indeterminate? Well, the basic reason is that we can identify polynomials um, inside of a ring. So like Pn is a subset of the ring Z2x. And since Z2x is a ring, I mean, it's actually a highly structured ring. Um, this would be a Euclidean domain, for example. Uh, but this polynomial ring has multiplication because it's a ring. So we had advantages of considering addition of vectors, scaling of vectors, which with Z2, that doesn't mean anything, but for other, other coefficients, you could have some benefit there. Um, we've even talked about cyclic codes where group actions can come into play. The more algebraic structure we can put onto our codes, it seems to strengthen the codes. Could we add an addition to addition multiplication? Well, if we think of them as polynomials, there is a multiplicative structure going on there. So let me show you how one can build a code using polynomial multiplication. So imagine you have an m-bit message, which we can identify then with a Co with a polynomial in the set p sub m, m minus 1. And then suppose we also have a polynomial g of x um, whose degree is n minus m in that situation. Now, the, the degree of m is at most m minus 1 in that situation. Uh, these are polynomials f of x and g of x that belong to z2x. I can multiply them together. I can, I can identify a map, a map which will send f of x to the product g of x times f of x. So not scalar multiplication, but polynomial multiplication. Um, so I can define a map which is multiplication by g. 
Now, if you think of the domain and co-domain here, we take polynomials with whose degrees at most m minus one. If we times that by the polynomial g of x, that'll give us a polynomial whose degrees at most n minus one. Um, and so multiplication by g gives us a map that sends an m bit polynomial into an n bit polynomial. Thus, multiplication by this polynomial G gives us an encoding map um, for these polynomials. So multiplication, we can encode the matrix, uh, we can encode matrices by polynomial multiplication. We did that previously with matrices, but we can do it with a polynomial, which polynomial multiplication might seem simpler than, of course, the matrix multiplication we've done before. And so this process of identifying your messages and code words with polynomials and encoding them by polynomial multiplication, um, if, a po if a linear code is encoded using these polynomials, then we refer to this as a polynomial code. Let me give you an example of such a thing. Consider the polynomial g of x, uh, which equals 1 plus x cubed. OK, um, it, we're going to show that this polynomial G can be used to create a 6, 3 polynomial code. Um, so we take a 3 uh, a, a three bit message. So typically our vectors would look something like, oh, you have something here, a naught, a 1, um, a 2. We can identify that with the polynomial a naught plus a 1 x plus a2x squared. Um, and as such, it, when it comes to this encoding process, it's often important to look at the standard basis for z23 in that situation. So that would be like the vector 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. But with this polynomial identification, we can associate to each of these polynomials now the constant 1, the variable x, and the variable x squared. And so when it comes to encoding, because we have a linear map, um, because after all, multiplication by a polynomial is linear. Polynomial multiplication will distribute over addition, and as the only, and it would also it would also be compatible with scalar multiplication. Multiplication by a polynomial is a linear map here. It only suffices to say what happens to a basis. So if you take one times g, you're going to get g of x, one plus x cubed. If you take that, if you multiply that by x, you're going to get x plus x to the fourth. And, and if you multiply g by x squared, you're going to get x squared plus x to the fifth, like so. So using the standard bases, 1x, x squared, and 1x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, which this is the standard basis right here of P2, and this is the standard basis of P5, like so. Then this identification right here, um, 1 goes to g, x goes to xg, and x squared goes to um x squared g, notice what happens here. We're going to take this vector, 1, 0, 0. This is going to be identified with 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. This vector here, which is 1, 0, excuse me, 0, 1, 0, will be identified with 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then the last one, we could identify it with 0, 0, 1. I'm putting this back into the vector coordinates. This would be identified with 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, I'm, so while we can use the polynomials, I do want to show you what the associated linear code would look like with vectors and matrices in the usual sense. Um, this actually produces the matrix you see right here, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. It's just the identity matrix. Then you see the identity matrix again. Uh, this is the matrix we've seen before. Actually, in our very previous video, we called this G1. And this actually produced a cyclic code. Um, it wasn't a really great cyclic code, but nonetheless, it was a cyclic code. And it turns out that we will see in the next video that these polynomial codes are very, very natural can be very naturally used to produce cyclic codes. It has to do with, of course, ideals inside of these polynomial rings. But like I said, we're going to talk about that in the next video.